so my entire career has been chasing the key question which is about understanding and solving the mysteries of life and all of us know that the blueprint of life which is DNA has all these questions somewhere written in the code and that's exactly what I have been chasing and it has taken me places uh, from plants to insects to kangaroos, potteroos, um, even humans like uh, recently been looking at the SARS-CoV-2 virus genome sequences. They mostly uh, give you opportunities or ways to solve problems. My day is super exciting normally, like I, I get out of the bed super excited to see what I did yesterday and how it is looking. So for example, um, when you are chasing um, the the answers to life code, right? You've assembled, you got um, hold of a DNA of some particular species. Then I do a lot of lab work, which in involves doing some chemistry, fun experiments and mixing solutions together to really to be able to read that code precisely. And to be honest, uh, genomics as a discipline has come a long way. It's not a very old discipline. It just, uh, it's just probably a decade old that we have started to read the code of life so accurately and precisely. Just to give you an example on that one, human DNA took 10 years to put together and it costed us $2.7 billion. And that was 2010. We are 2020. Now at DNA Zoo, we have a technology or a way to assemble that whole code for $1,000. 2.7 billion to $1,000 cost and to be able to read that with that precision. I think we've come a long way and it's, it's getting even more exciting. I'm actually very excited about all the high quality data that is coming out from the life sciences overall, whether you talk about biomedical sciences, like we're doing personalized medicine these days, right? So you're reading every single uh, code from every single individual. And just to give you an example, you kind of, if it's a 3GB genome, which is a human genome written in 3 billion letters, it, it's, you have to read it a few times to get it absolutely correct. So you normally generate about 170 to 200 GB data, uh, gigabytes of data per individual. And it's billions of us on the planet, right? Similarly, for one quaka, I generate about 150 gigabytes of data to read it accurately. Or a koala, similar sort of mammal genome sizes. So just imagine uh, if you only talk about the species which are at the risk of extinction right now, there's about one million species which really need to be decoded and to have like a better plan or a strategic way of breeding them or protecting them moving forward. So it's, it's huge amounts of data and we need the next generation to be able to sort of make sense out of that data. So they need to sort of pick up the skills like programming, computer sciences, but also have the understanding to the fundamental blocks of life, you know, to be able to make sense out of all that data. So I think it's super exciting, especially for WA, I would say we have something like POSI Supercomputing Center at our doorstep. POSI has mainly been, um, been enrolled for space sciences and you know we're building one of the biggest telescopes in the world. But having said that, that, that is an exciting opportunity for uh, life sciences because we can use it in many different ways and not just understanding the space but also understanding you know, our local uh, environment, our own DNA and everything else which surrounds us. That would be awesome if I could go back in time and and probably combine what I learned in the biological space with a bit of programming knowledge, with a bit of like AI or robotics, you know, because then you just equip yourself with so many different skill sets that you can combine them and you can answer all these exciting questions which are coming, coming my way right now. But uh, it's all right, I can't time travel, but I have the next generation, uh, you know, who come as students 
and they 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 pick up some really exciting topics and it's so creative um, I'm having a really great time especially being at a university like University of Western Australia and getting connected to all these young people uh, it's 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 super fun yeah my key advice would be that it is really important to have a vision and a focus in that area it is quite interesting to have technology or a stem overall come a long way but without having a problem solving attitude stem can't help you and if you do have that problem solving at attitude you got to have a variety of skills and data analysis or big data is definitely something i would highly recommend uh, for the future but having said that i would say there is no shortcut or there is no substitute for hard work and finding mentors early on is a very very good way because if you can learn from others who've been on that journey um, it can save you a lot of uh, testing and trialing things so yeah get yourself a mentor uh, someone who's been on a path which you aspire to be on